Well, welcome back to part two of the Idols Aside podcast with Uncle Cy Robertson. We're still down here in West Monroe, Louisiana. We're having a time. We just wrapped up episode uh, episode part one with Uncle Cy. We've got some more exciting stuff. The gospel is going to be talked about. We got some questions from some people answered uh, last episode, and we actually got one more uh, this morning for you. You think you can handle one more crazy question? Yeah, yeah. All right, well, Matthew Gilbert he serves on staff with us. He, he lives in Metropolis, Illinois, home of Superman. Okay. And uh, he kind of believes that the earth is flat, and he doesn't believe man's been on the moon, but he wants to know, is Bigfoot real? I, well, hey, first of all, I don't believe, I don't believe there's uh, been on the moon either. Okay. We, okay. You ain't got to convince me. You might have convinced me. I just look, because, hey, here's, here's the deal for you. When I meet Jesus face to face in heaven, Here's what I'm going to ask him. I said, Lord, can I take about a year off and then go and see the rest of your creation? <laughs> okay, because look, we, we're supposedly, we've been we on the moon and we went by Mars and we've done all this stuff. I, I, don't, I just don't believe that. You know, in the military, there's a, a you know, a Area 54 and it's all fenced in. I think that's where they shot the moon sequence. <laughs> now, that's just my opinion. That's what, that's what Matthew said. To that's, okay. that's what Matthew says. No, no, no. I'm just, that's my opinion. Is, okay. that, is that where Bigfoot is too? Because uh, look, hey, I know we've got rockets and all this stuff that go and we you know, kill each other off in war and all this stuff. And like, you know, you know I, I just would like to, hey, why don't we go back to God's word? Uh-huh. You know, love him with everything we got, and then love each other, our neighbor, as ourselves. That way there wouldn't be no more, more war, and there wouldn't be no more killing. So how about Bigfoot? Huh? Bigfoot, you know, look, I, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you my answer after I tell you a little story. <laughs> if I was to get on a helicopter right here on West Monroe and, and actually fly low right over the tree, all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. There ain't nothing but pine thickets from here all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. And look, they're so thick that, hey, you can't crawl through them until a logging company goes in and logs some of them pine trees to make our paper and everything that they make after wood. I said, you couldn't even crawl through them. I said, then you're going to tell me, because I've got, I've got a biologist that tells me black panthers ain't real, okay, which that's untrue. I said, look, there was a guy that put a thousand trail cameras out in the Amazon jungle because he's a doctor and he studies cats. Look, and they had one picture, one picture now of one cat and he spent like 12 years, because everybody said, no, they're extinct. Well, he spent 12 years and a thousand trail cam in the Amazon jungle, and guess what? It took him 12 years, but he's got another picture of that one cat. How'd it get there? Yeah, yeah. So, hey, yeah. Now, Bigfoot may exist, okay, because they supposedly see him all over the world, and especially there's the, uh, the 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 snowman Bigfoot, you know. They say they've seen Bigfoot in the Florida Everglades, and and like when he's around, you smell skunk. That's what they say he smells like is a skunk. So hey, he I don't know. Smokes marijuana. <laughs> well, no, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, that, that's it. That might be somebody in the swamp on on weed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, hey, what, one of a uh, a quote that comes up from you, Cy, all over Google, is uh, one of your famous quotes: "Is it ain't gun control we need, it's sin control." Yeah. And uh, so, why why do you think we are seeing so much sin in the world today, and kids being raised without fathers in America? Here's the deal: the answer to that, okay, is the evil one is on this earth. Yep. And he's roaming around like a lion 
Look into for someone to devour. Mm-hmm. That's the answer. That's why I said my common sense kick is where the beauty come from, where does evil come from? And I gave you the answer. The beauty is from God Almighty. Yeah. Everything good comes from the Godhead, the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Everything bad you see comes from the evil one. Yep, deceiver. That's it. Yeah. All right. He's so, a liar and a deceiver from the beginning. So a biblical warrior, godly, tough man in 2024, what does it look like? A guy that drinks like frappuccinos and frou-frou coffees, or, or is it black coffee? Or how about a guy in skinny jeans and flat brim hats? What does psychology say about this? I want to hear what a real man is. Well, no, no, a real man is, hey, is the man, hey, a real man cries. Okay, there we go. A real man is weak. Okay, and look, here's the whole deal, okay? I think the scripture says, okay, all my strength, I can do all things in Christ. Yeah. Okay, because he is my strength. Mm -hmm. Even even with uh, frappuccinos? Hey. And, or folders? Yeah. yeah. Skinny Yo, jeans and flat brim hats, those guys can do it too? Hey, look, all that's temporary. Everything on this earth is temporary, okay? That's why Jesus is so important. Okay? Nothing. Now you got to, hey, nothing. Jesus is everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. He's enough. Jesus, Jesus is enough. Jesus is everything. You're talking about, and I love it every time I say it. I am a child. I am a child of I am. The great I am. There's nothing better or bigger. Jason done a lesson on that. Said, you know, we don't even have the word that properly, okay, tells us who God is. There's not a word to describe him because he's better than anything we ever known. He's greater than anything you ever known. Mm -hmm. And, and I am says it all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And he's the there same. is no beginning and end in I am. He's the same yesterday, today, so, forever. Yeah. The Robertson family is a very big family. And so yeah. you've got a lot, of, probably a lot of new new young men coming into the family, you know? Yep. Yeah. Um, so, so what do these guys have to prove to get into the family? Like, I won't hear, I, there's got to be some well, good stories. I mean, is it shotgun shells? Well, number, it... number one, okay, first thing, anytime, anytime anything happens, you got to assess blame. Who is the blame for this, whatever has happened? That's one thing Robertson's about, okay? Number two, we hate phones, the men. Okay, and I'm, I'm this way. I'm so old school, okay? Look, you know, if you want to see me, I don't have a phone. It won't work for me. You know, I got to, I, I'll tell you how bad them are. They tried to make it idiot proof, okay, because they're dealing with me. <laughs> okay, because everybody will tell you I'm crazy. Okay. But anyway, you know, they gave me the class on it, told me, okay, see this button in the middle of it? I said, yeah. He, they said, that's called the home button. Touch it and a menu comes up. Then they said, well, hey, look, we made this idiot proof because right, here's the deal. We gave you a phone list of the people that you may need to call. And all you've got to do is hit the home button, the phone list to come up, and then whoever you want to, Jay Stone, touch Jay Stone, and it'll dial his number, and you can talk to him. Well, look, they done that. So this was when I, I had my band, and I was out doing gigs, singing. You know, I'd fly in somewhere, and I'd, the ladies would have to pick me up because my daughter-in-law was in the band, and Bridget Tatum was in the band. They're, they're my band members. <clears throat> yeah. So I would call, and all I'd ever get out of this stupid phone is, darling, darling, darling. Yeah. So here, I'm at the airport now, and I'm waiting, and I've already tried it for like 30 minutes, so finally somebody walks by a fan and said, Uncle Si, can I get a picture with you? I said, on one condition. And they said, what's that? I said, that you call this number on my phone. Well, they would grab my phone and try to call it on my phone, 
And then we'd waste another 15 minutes listening to, darling, darling. And I said, baby, hey, do me a favor. Hand me my phone back, and I'll turn it off and put it in my pocket after I tell you the number, and would you call the number? Well, they'd call the number, and Bridget would answer and say, hey, I'm about five minutes out from the airport. I'll be there in a minute. She said, I didn't recognize the number, and I said, that's got to be that old man. <laughs> they won't work for me. When I was in the military, computer, okay, I'd be screaming at it because I, I got some a hot item that needs to be handled, and I'd say, okay, sign, Sergeant First Class Robertson, you know, and file it. And then file it, and it, as soon as it filed it, it put the last line in there three times. You know, so I'm screaming at this stupid machine like it me, it's a communication. This stupid, you know, my, my boss walks up by me and says, what's wrong, Robertson? I said, hey, look what it did. And he said, well, hey, it's 5 o'clock. He looked at his watch and he said, it's 5 o'clock. Go home. I'll fix it. And I said, hey, look, this is important. It needs to be handled tonight. He said, I'll fix it and send it out. Don't worry about it. So look, I come back in the next morning. He's done crashed the system seven times, had to reload everything <laughs> for the whole division. And he said, what did you do? <laughs> and I said, y'all always ask me that question. I said, look, number one, I ain't smart enough on this computer to do anything. I said, the stupid thing, I said, when God gets sick of the human race, he's going to turn the computer loose and kill every one of them. <laughs> I said, that's my opinion of Cuba, because I just, no, nah, it ain't no good. Yeah. You know, with our, with our ministry, we, um, we're, we're fighting for the followers. We're, yep. we're, we're serving. James one twenty seven says, pure and undefiled religion is this, that you go to widows, orphans, fatherless, the King James Version says fatherless, uh, in their affliction. That's pure and undefiled religion. Uh, so obviously that's the heart of God. Do you think uh, the American church is fighting for the fatherless today? No, like intentionally. the the American church, okay, the the evil one has done a number on the human race, period, mm -hmm. okay? He's attacked God's family unit, okay? And if he can, and he's done it, okay? Mm -hmm. Because marriage is not what it used to be, okay? People get married today like they're, they're going down and buying a shirt or something. Mm -hmm. No, I'm serious. It's horrible. Because they, they don't have any commitment. They marry him, and then like, you know, like my buddy of mine, you know, he, he told his daughter, look, I'll give you and your intended husband $100,000 cash, or we'll throw you a big wedding. Yeah, well, if it would have been me, I would have said, hey, give me the cash. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. no brainer. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yep. You know how long their marriage lasted? He spent about two hundred fifty thousand. Wow. You know how long it lasted? Six months. Oh my goodness. Mm. They was together six months, and I looked and said, "Hey, what a waste." Mm. You know, and I like I I've, I've got a, a young lady kin to me, Jay Stone's daughter, Carly. She says get married here the twenty second. You know, and I told her I said, "Hey, look, if your dad offers you five thousand dollars, he ain't got a whole bunch of money, but if he offers you five grand." Hey, you just go to the justice peace, pay him like fifty, whatever it costs nowadays to get married. Pay him that and you 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 put that five thousand in the bank. Cause you trust me when I tell you, you're gonna need it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You know, because it was such a waste. But look, God is the one that instituted marriage. You know, a lot of people said, Well, hey, what's this big deal about you can't have sex before you marry? Hey, you got to do it right. Put a ring on the woman's finger. And then, hey, God's never said, hey, you can't have sex. God says just the opposite. Hey, go forth and be fruitful and multiply. Sex is in with God. But, hey, not outside the marriage bed. Yeah, yep. Stop being greedy. You've got a woman. She's yours. Be true to her. If you if you could tell the church anything today about fighting for the fatherless, what would you say? Well, they need to read the scriptures. Hmm. Yep. God's religion is, is how you take care of the widows and, and the orphans. 
we've taken, the human race has taken the word religion and we've made it where it's unrecognizable. Just like the, the saying, oh, uh, where are you going? I'm going to church. <laughs> that ain't phrase. in the Bible. That's a funny phrase. That ain't in the Bible. That's why, like, my brother has been telling them for 40 years, take the name off of the building. And, and hey, what does God say about who you are? What word would you give to single moms that have just been through traumas and struggles in life that are just battling? You know, they, maybe, maybe they don't feel like they fit. or they My question would you know. be to Dolan, how have you done as good as you've done up to now without Jesus in your life? Because I, I see, that was the biggest thing I preach on when I'm out. Is I said, okay, let's let's just let's hypothetical thing. Uncle Sal si goes to the doctor, okay, and the doctor tells me, me, hey, you got stage four cancer. You got less than two years to live. I said that wouldn't be no big deal to me. I said, but hey, back it up 25 years when I had two kids, young young man and a young lady. And they're four years old, one of them four years old, and I take her to the doctor, my daughter. And they say, hey, your daughter has stage four cancer. I said, if you don't have a strong family unit or you don't have a relationship with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who do you turn to when you've been hit in the gut with that? Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, like I said, because I'm not a crisis person. You have those people that are good in crisis moments, that they're smart enough, they can under control, and they said, yeah, you need to do this, take her to the doctor, take her to the emergency room, whatever. I'm not one of them. I fall to pieces. That's where you, when you get back on being a man, I've got a poor opinion of myself as a man because I could have handled a lot of things way better. Okay, that's why I said a real man, hey, he has doubts. A real man, I cry. I've got emotions for crying out loud. Yeah. I, don't, I don't have all the answers. And sometimes you've got to be the one that has the answers. Mm -hmm. But see, I can't give you but one answer. Jesus. That's it. When it comes right down to everything, Jesus is enough. I can give you one answer and only one. If you ain't got Jesus, you ain't got squat. It's true. Yep. And that's the bottom. That's the bottom line, and that is the truth of the matter. Doesn't matter how poor or rich you are. No. Yep. Look. Oh no. On that. <laughs> In my short lifetime, I've known people that were filthy rich. Okay, I mean that, hey, they got enough money to do whatever they want to and buy everything they want to. And guess what? They was the most miserable human being I've ever been around in my life. A lost ball in high grass. Just it's sad. It was worthless. Yep. It was worthless. But the Bible's got a whole <laughs> book on that. Yep. Ecclesiastes. Solomon had it all. He had done it all. He had had over a thousand women. And you know what he said about it? It's meaningless. All of it is meaningless. Yep. Wait a minute. You had it all. You were a king. You had more money. You were women. It didn't. Hey, God created man with a yearning. Okay. Yep. He's got a big empty hole, and there ain't but one thing that'll fill it. Mm -hmm. That's a and that would be God Himself, the Creator. You know, that's why when people uh, they ooh, <sighs> there's too much beauty. Number one, okay, and like there are scientists, some of them. This guy's one. He become a creationist first. Then it come, became a Christian. Yep. Because guess what? What he saw, he was smart enough to know that, hey, there's got to be a creator. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'll just give you my little 
spill on that. We call it constellations. There's 88 of them, 88 of them in the sky at night. And guess what? One of them is, is a man with a bow and arrow, and he's got it at full draw. This is stars, okay? This whole thing is stars millions of miles away from us. And Uncle Si can see it with his naked eye. Where did, is that, where did it, that design come from? In the sky at night. The answer? Hey, like all the answers. Any question you can come up with, the answer is going to be the God. God it. The answer is always going to be Jesus. Period. Well, hey, hey, to change the note, we're flipping it around a little bit different. Now, don't limit this to yourself or throw anybody under the bus, okay? No, you no. can throw anybody under the bus you want you th to. You think well, so? I'm good. Yeah, we're yeah, good at that. Yeah. Ralph is good at that. Throw what, them under the bus. What is the stupidest thing you have ever seen on a hunt in the woods or in the duck blind? What's the stupidest thing you've seen? Well, I've seen it so many times. We, you know, you got it. You got it. There's a, uh, 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 I can't even think of the word, oh, but the hierarchy, okay? In, in our duck hunting, okay? The hierarchy is Phil Robertson, Jason Robertson, and then, then everybody else falls under that. So we were there. Jason and Phil are calling, okay? And we got a bunch of pintails coming. And pintails have got a bad thing about they would, you know, come in real close the first time. Like 50, 50 or under. Well, we keep messing with them, and they get 80, and then at, then we've had them at 30. Hmm. And then at 80 yards, they say, all right, cut them. You know, and I always said, I said, well, hey, y'all blew it on that? And they said, what are you talking about, man? And I said, hey, why didn't you shoot them at 30 when they come by the first time? Instead of wasting your time calling them three more rounds, and then when they got out of range where well, we can't but cripple one out of a whole bunch, you know, <laughs> that's the dumbest thing I've done, and it's over and over and over. And that's like Phil and, and Jason always tell me, first of all, the only spot in the blind, okay, is my spot. When I walk in, i got to take 30 minutes to kind of create me a hole just to get my shotgun out to be able to shoot. Okay, because I, I always, I, I was like my father. My father never sat down in the duck blind. He was always standing and be the one watching. Jason and Phil both, to this day, think that if you stand up, that you flare ducks. They'll always, all they all ever say in the duck blind is, Si, sit down. Si, sit down. Si. I said, hey, look, you got a tree growing in front of me that I can't even shoot through. <laughs> I said, I'm not flaring them. And I said, you go down on either end where Phil sits or Jason sits, and it's wide open. I said, you boys are the ones that's flaring the ducks. Better to shoot them at 30 than 80. It, hey, it's better to shoot them at 30. I can kill way more at 30. What is your best hunting story? My best one is on teal, green wing teal. Now, you got to understand, we've got a gun supplier that supports us, and that's Benelli. So, look, they sent us a brand new shotgun. Benelli uh, Black Eagle Three. I got a twenty gauge because I'm, I'm sick of carrying a, a you know a gun that weighs fifteen pounds. <laughs> Give me a light one. You know, so I went with a twenty gauge. So look, they sent me this brand new twenty gauge Benelli and it's got five chokes, extra full, full, modified, improved cylinder and open bore. So look, Uncle Si gets a two foot square, five of them and I stake them in the ground, and I mark off 25 yards, and then I shoot the extra full, full, modified, improved cylinder, and open bore, and then I go down and look at the targets. And I said, hmm, okay, good grief. Extra full, two doves could get through that pattern. <laughs> yeah, one dove in, in, in the full, you know, a half a dove in the modified, you know, an improved cylinder, uh, you know, it, yeah, I can't kill none. And then I went to the open bore. <clears throat> I said, I could kill a hummingbird 
if he come through there with that open bore. So look, we're getting the duck blind. It's teal season. And here comes 25 green wing teal. You know, Jace calls at them, they go make a circle and come by one time. Yeah. Make a circle and come by the second time. And when the second time, they broke into two groups, 15 and 10. And the 10 are following the 15. Well, the third time they come back in there, and right when they got over the decoys, they start backpedaling, and all of them, they, the 10 catch up with the 15. And they're just on top of each other doing this. Well, hey, I just raised up because, hey, I've already patterned my gun. I raised up, and before he said cut them, and I've done, I done three times. Boom, boom, boom. And I moved. First shot was right in the front. Or no, well, first shot was in the back, back of them, move foot forward, second shot, move foot forward, third shot. And all this happened, and the ducks are about, all the all 25 of them in a five-foot circle, about as big as this table. Well, hey, 17 of them just, <laughs> whoo, down. <laughs> then the other seven left start going up, and just, boom, 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 they're all dead. All 25 of them died. You know, so everybody's high five and talking about, boy, did we ever kill them? Well, you got to go here. I said, I started laughing. They said, what are you laughing about? I said, Somebody, somebody's telling a bunch of lies. And come <laughs> Sunday, y'all going to need to go down front and repent. I said, y'all claiming ducks that y'all did not kill. And I said, and hey, the proof's in the pudding. I said, because hey, look. I said, I just shot three. First, the first shot was me. Three. Three times, fast like a bull trigger. I said, 17 failed because of that. I said, because hey. 17. I said, 17 failed. I said, because hey, guess what? I said. Six ducks a shot. Yeah. No, no. Because I, I, I said, then I start going with the gun. I said, what do you got in your, your shotgun, Phil? He said, extra four. I said, okay. I said, how far were them ducks? He said, probably 15, 20 feet. I said, okay. I said, Jace, what you got in your gun? He said, extra full. I said, okay. Stone, extra full. I said, y'all are shooting the twenty two rifle at him. I said, out of the three of you, y'all may have crippled one. I said, 17 fell the first volley. I said, that'd be yours truly. I said, because, hey, I'm shooting a barn door. <laughs> I said, because, hey, I've got it down to a science. I said, I, said, I shot a two-foot square circle on my five targets. I said, and I got to think about that. I said, hey, draw 18 inches and then draw 18 inches together and 18 inches. I said, when you add that up, I said, that's 54 inches. I said, that's less than five feet. I said, them ducks were all five within five feet. And I said, and guess what I did? I said, I put three shots back on the back, moved it a, 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 a foot in the middle, Moved another foot and on the t on the front. I said, I killed 17 of them. The Lord one day is going to show you who's, who's, who's truthful. I said, hey, I'm doing, I said, this is mathematics, okay, one-on-one. <laughs> God's in the numbers. God is in the numbers. Numbers. I said, hey, I said, y'all didn't kill nothing. I said, you're shooting a slug. He's <laughs> shooting <laughs> shoot a slug. Buckshot. I said, that's, I said, hey, look, that's common sense. I said, so remember that next time we get a bunch in, a bunch of them falls. I said, y'all can point right down here to the Vietnam vet. He's the one that killed him. There you go. There you go. Awesome. Yeah. And that, hey, proof's in the pudding. Absolutely. There you go. Well, hey, Uncle Cy, uh, <laughs> I love as we just close this out, would you just pray um, just over our, our Idols Aside ministry, the fatherless kids, the single mothers and grandmas that are out there um, just loving on these kids and that the Lord will just continue to just yep. bless what we're trying to do to spread this message. Of yep. I'll be, I'll be honest. Y'all bow with me. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Father, we lift up the, these young men and their ministry. Father, I've always said it. I don't know who that, uh, who they turn to. If they don't have a relationship with you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and then especially, okay, in this instance, for they are fatherless. Okay, the head of the household is not there. Okay, and look, that's a big hole to fill. Okay, but they're not fatherless, okay, because you're there. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, but Father, we ask you to be personally involved in this, you the Son and Holy Spirit, 
okay, bless their ministry, okay, bless, bless and give those kids that are fatherless healing and give them the knowledge to deal with it, okay, and hopefully, Father, they'll turn to you, your Son, and your Holy Spirit, yeah. because that, okay, is the ultimate, yeah. okay, you are the ultimate answer to all of us, mm -hmm. okay, but Father, we ask you to bless this ministry, all those that hear this podcast, Maybe they're touching their hearts, Father, and they'll get involved in some way. Father, help us to church, your church, okay, that your son established, mm -hmm. okay, and who is the head of it, okay. Let us get involved and be behind this, Father, to help these children that have been, unfortunately, through divorce or even through death, okay, that their father was taken away from them, okay, because it is... The family unit is of just uh, the importance of it can't be can't be measured, okay. But we ask you to get involved with it, Father. Bless it, take it where you want it to go. And as always, Father, the glory is all yours, and it will always be yours. Yes. And we thank you for the Son that you sent. Thank you, Lord, for your loving us enough to willingly die for everything that we do wrong. Mm. And we ask forgiveness for that. Yep. But Father, again. Bless this ministry, have it go where you would have it go, and bless it with your your power, Father. And with that, we know that, okay, everything will be all right. And we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the King of kings and Lord of lords. And that says it all. Amen. Yeah, amen. amen. Thank you. Amen. Well, thank you, I Am Community. Can't wait to see you next time. Thank you, Uncle Si. <laughs> right, my pleasure. Guys. Thank you. Yes, yep. sir.